from around the globe. It's the Cube with coverage of SUSECON Digital. Brought to you by SUSE. Welcome back. I'm Stu Miniman, and this is the Cube's coverage of SUSECON Digital 20. Uh, really excited we get to talk to the SUSE executives, their partners, and their customers. In this segment, uh, we have one of the customers. He's in the keynote on really excited to talk to him, Gunther Kapush. Nick, he is the CIO of DAMG. Uh, if you're not familiar with them, they are the Central Institution for Meteorology and Geodynamic, the oldest weather service in the world, uh, based out of Austria. Gunther, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. All right. So, you know, obviously, you know, weather, uh, you know, something we are very interested in on the cube. You know, we we talk how important data is, and data is of course central to what your service is doing, providing data to organizations that they can they can do lots with it. Um, give us a little bit, you know, we, we probably don't have time to go through the 150 plus year history of the organization, but uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what, what what your organization does and uh, especially your role as CIO, what, what's involved with that? Uh, let me hook in and one, one thing you said, we are the oldest uh, weather service in the world. I always tell people, uh, we are doing big data analytics until 8051. Um, and actually that's true. Um, we have uh, actually two big uh, data centers uh, based in Austria. Uh, we are um, operating about 20 petabytes of data, 100,000 data sets um, per minute. What is very, very interesting for uh, tech guys we have one small data center additional on over 3,000 uh, meters above uh, sea level on the observatory. It's in the middle of the glacier. You can't imagine how cool that is when you go up into the glacier and there you have a lot of sensors, a lot of uh, measurements, and a lot of data collecting um, configurations. Um, actually, we are also using a lot of supercomputers. We do simulating, we do a lot of AI, we do big data analytics, and the most important thing, we do a lot of cooperation uh, with the people around there. Yeah, uh, you know, in 1851, it uh, wasn't exactly supercomputers. Uh, you're gathering data from a lot of sources. Uh, help us understand a little bit, what are some of the you know, asks that the business have for you? What are the kind of, you know, challenges, uh, you know, in 2020 that might be a little bit different uh, than they were years ago? Mm. Uh, weather comes from a quite different uh, source. Um, actually in 8051, it was more for the, the king, um, for their wars. Um, nowadays, it's uh, much more peaceful, thank God. Um, it's more for sporting, it's more for producing things, it's a lot for logistics, but it's actually for all the human people uh, out there. Um, and therefore we have to use uh, a lot of data, a lot of processes, and uh, a lot of different customer journeys. Um, our most important thing is customer first. So we try to produce um, our forecasts, our um, integrated processes, especially for the customers. Just a um, quick example is uh, the Olympic uh, Winter Games. Um, the ZMG is doing um, the forecast for the last two uh, Winter Games um, because we are doing now casting. We're very good at now casting. That means the forecast between the next five minutes to 15 minutes uh, with a vertical grid of 100 to 150 meter, which is very, very uh, important for um, some kind of events. Um, but we do other forecasts as well. Um, the only thing we cannot forecast, but we also do uh, earthquakes. Um, that means natural earthquakes on the one side, on the other side, uh, artificial earthquakes, which are produced uh, through um, normally bombs or nuclear bombs. And uh, we are working with the uh, CTPTO, um, the UN organization, together to um, uh, analyze and to, to measure these illegal um, nuclear tests um, to make the world a little bit 
a better place. Yeah, so, so Gunther, it's interesting. You mentioned in the early days, it was you know weather for the king. One of the things we, we look about in data, uh, especially in the public sector is, you know, what data, you know, where do you collect it from? How much pairing is there? Uh, can you talk a little bit about, you know, how it goes kind of beyond your borders? And is there, you know, I, I guess, how do you work with other organizations? Is there any of the data that's shared, any of the models that's shared? How, how does that work together in your organization? Uh, the most important thing is the link data, to link our data to other, other organizations and to collect other data from other organizations. It's not forecast anymore. It's forecast integrating into processes, especially in the business, business processes. Um, weather doesn't stop at the borders. That's the good thing. <laughs> so we had a lot of collaboration with our neighbors, uh, with other weather services from our neighbors. That's one thing. To have them, the big picture um, for our models, for our simulations. Uh, but what we also do is a lot of crowd data. Um, because the more data we get, the more data we can assimilate to our model, the better, the higher is the resolution of our forecast. Um, so we do a lot of um, integration of uh, this crowd uh, source weather. That could be on the one hand, a simple app, that could uh, be a, a weather station uh, in, our, in your home, but that could also be a photograph, what you do with your um, smartphone, where we do um, artificial intelligence algorithms um, to get out information about clouds, about damages, what we integrate again in our models, in our simulations, and give you the better forecast as a response. Um, we have a big uh, cooperation, for example, with um, the Austrian Fire Department, um, they get the best forecast we can ever do, a specialized forecast for their emergencies. When there's um, um, a fire in the woods, for example, they need a special um, soil moisture, for example. They need um, wind directions. They need wind strengths. Um, they can use this on their smartphone. They can uh, use it on their, their smartwatch. Um, they do... Um, pictures of the emergency, send it back to us, we analyze it and do a live modeling through our supercomputers to have a better forecast on this place. Excellent, uh, you, you talked a bit, a bit about communities, uh, you know, leveraging lots, lots of different technologies. Uh, I, I guess that's, a, that's a, a, a good way for us to help connect the dot to us talking here at TUSACON. Uh, you know, obviously open source, the community is a big piece of what we are hearing at the show. Uh, talk to us a little bit about, you know, the SUSE, uh, you know, what technologies are using them? You know, what, what's the role of open source? Uh, is, is that a key piece of uh, how you look at technology? Nothing is more boring than the weather from yesterday. So what we need is a really fast development of our forecasts um, to our customers. And SUSE helps us there. Um, we have special services, especially on our shipper computers, where we use the special SUSE operating system. We use SUSE um, on our storage systems, on our software-defined storage system. Um, to have a quicker development to our customers, to our corporation partners. And uh, the last big thing is, we use SUSE on containering platforms and on AI, AI platforms. Um, so the new SUSE AI platform, uh, we try to do forecasts for avalanches, for snow avalanches. Um, and that's a really, really big effort at the moment because there are people dying every year in Austria in the Alps uh, because of avalanches. And maybe we can save some of them because we do a good forecast together with SUSE. Excellent. Uh, you, know, you talk about moving to containerization. You know, give us a little insight. You, you are a government agency. Uh, you know, how easy it is, is it for you, you to take advantage of new technologies? Uh, you know, any guidance you can give as to things that you've gone through that might be able to help? Mm -hmm. Innovation and new technology is uh, kind of moving on the edge because on the one hand, we are 24-7 um, the whole year long. 
Um, we have to be high availability, very, very stable. On the other hand, we want to have new technologies, new innovations. Um, so it's really, really working on the edge. Uh, we use two groups, two separate uh, data centers. On one hand, we do the, all the stable thing, um, the high availability things. On the other things, um, on the other data center, on the other group, they are doing the cool new things. They do containerization, they do blockchaining, they do artificial intelligent uh, moves. And the thing is, they are working together. They are connected. Um, let me tell it this way. We have a very, very experienced head of uh, our one group, our stable 24-7 group, and very, very young, high potential on our innovation group. To be honest, first two weeks, they hated each other because the one guy wanted to have the innovation and going forward and forward and forward. And the other one said, no, stop. We have to be stable. That's the most important thing. After four weeks with a lot of maintenance, for sure, and with a lot of guidance, they started to love each other because they can learn from each other. And that's the main point. We learned about all these things. Now we can combine stable technology with new technology, with uh, cool new things, which can be proved on the one side and integrated in the stable side um, a little later. That, that, that's an excellent uh, you know, story to learn from. Uh, you know, learning, so important, great to hear uh, that uh, the you know, more traditional, uh, reliable group and the, the new innovation group work together. Um, of course, can't let you go talking about weather without touching on climate. So, you know, anybody that's watched the space with this global pandemic has been some interesting, uh, I, I guess you'd say positive side effects. Uh, there are, you know, parts of the world where pollution's cleaned up, uh, you know, major impacts uh, on climate that uh, I'd expect you have some interesting data on. Uh, you know, wh what can you share uh, when it comes to climate change, any advice uh, you'd give for business leaders uh, that, that are looking to help contribute in a positive way. Okay, sure. Um, actually, in our data center, we are also data hub for the ESA, the European Space Agency for the Sentinel data. This data is very interesting because it has a direct, or it shows a direct impact how the climate is changing. The most important thing I can tell you as a CIO, it is changing. That's the most important thing. Um, what we are looking for is how can we combine data to stop this climate change? How can we show other leaders, politicians, ETC, how to stop it? How can we work against it? And how we can we cooperate to work against it? Um, the thing is, if we only show as a weather service our climate data, that's nice to have. We see the curve that's going to be warmer and warmer, and um, that the parameters are changing. But that's not the goal. The goal is how can we work together? How can we link data together um, to stop pollution? to stop several kind of attributes um, to stop climate change. We started to do some collaborations with big companies. One of these is SUSE, one of these is Yellow Packard, um, to work together um, to combine resources, to combine uh, compute power, to combine storage, to combine knowledge, especially data, uh, to stop climate change. Excellent. Uh, so, Gunther, final question uh, is, you know, any, uh, anything you've been seeing change? Uh, being a CIO, uh, you know, question we always have, uh, something we heard in the keynote is, you know, the, the, the changing role of the CIO. You talked a bit about AI, uh, talk about, you know, you live with, with you know, actual clouds uh, and supercomputers. Uh, so, you know, what in 2020, uh, is, is kind of different about the role of the CIO. What I really learned is IT is not the supporting uh, company or the supporting 
department anymore. IT is um, the strategic partner of each domain we have. Um, we had all our um, scientists, and they always told us, we are the scientists and we need IT. From several years now, they started to work together with the IT, with artificial intelligence, with big data analytics, with several platforms, with integrations, how to solve problems. So the CIO especially is not the IT leader anymore. It's more the management partner of the management board. board. So that means uh, the integration of the CIO in the whole company is much, much more uh, than it was uh, several years ago. Um, Mac Whitman, um, I met a few years ago and we had a good talk, uh, told me there is no company anymore without IT. That's not correct. There is no company anymore that is IT. Even every culture is IT. Everything is IT. Uh, it's no support anymore. It's um, linking anymore. Excellent. Yeah, yeah Gunther, I, 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 such an important point. You talk about if a company uh, is going to thrive in the modern era, data is such a critical piece of that. That you know gives you as a CIO uh, a, a seat at the table to work closely with them because if the business needs to be driven by data, uh, you know the CIO's role of connecting IT and the business so important. Thank you so much for sharing your stories. Pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. All right, and we'll be back with more coverage from Susik on Digital 20. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE.